What's up guys? Hope you're all doing good. So yeah, as I said at the end of the last video, we're upping it now to two videos a day. The first one being about comedy, like a comedy reaction, and then the second one, like a reaction to what you Americans do. Different bits and pieces. I've got like a array of different videos to get through. I absolutely love America, so it'd be interesting to really get to know a bit more, well, as much as I can, over the videos, because I am looking to get over there at the end of next year at some point. I absolutely love the place. So yeah, guys, let's not waste any more time. This one is 21 things in the US that puzzle most foreigners. So uh, I'm looking forward to this, man, because you've got some uh, pretty outlandish stuff, I think. So yeah, let's get into it. Well, you may have lived in the United States your whole life without realizing that something totally normal for you seems bizarre to people from other parts of the world. Who knew that munching on fried pickles in a highly air-conditioned room was so outlandish? Well, here are some other highly entertaining Americanisms I've gathered. Let's count it down from number 21. Sales tax is a guessing game. When you go shopping in the U.S. and see a price tag that says $14.88, don't expect to pay $14.88 at the register. Sales tax is not included in the price of an item. And since this tax can vary from state to state, figuring out your total can turn into the ultimate mental math challenge. In many European countries, the sales tax is already included in the price. It's known as a value-added tax, or VAT. Number 20. We're total workaholics. A lot of Americans don't feel the need to take long vacations, so they often let vacation and sick hours pile up without ever using them. Plus, most employers only give you two weeks out of the year. Yo, that's really bad, man. Really bad. We get, well, all about, on average, you get about four weeks plus all your bank holidays, which is like seven days. So you roughly get around five weeks a year. That's crazy, man. Two weeks. Jesus Christ, there's no way in hell I'd work all year round. Two weeks holiday, not a chance. Well, when you're working for an employer anyway, if it's, I suppose if it's your own business, it's a bit different. Going back to the first one, though, uh, with the VAT, yeah, pretty much everything we buy in the shop is um, already got the VAT added, unless you go to like... Um, like a wholesalers or something, and sometimes you have to pay the VAT, the VAT at the end or the, the, the value added tax at the end. But for the most part, yeah, if you're just in a grocery store or whatever, it's all added in there, so you ain't got to like try and guess how much you're going to pay. But that's two weeks holiday, man, that's crazy. But in a lot of other countries, like Brazil or Finland, workers are encouraged to take an average of 30 days of vacay. Wow, maybe I should take some time off, or perhaps I'll just keep waiting. 19. It's not a party without red solo cups. In the States, this red plastic cup is synonymous with party on, dude. But other countries apparently don't recognize this cup to mean the same thing. People in the UK, for example, don't use red solo cups at get-togethers. They have to go to a special website to purchase the cups for American theme parties. Yeah, that's true. Who knew? Number 18, deep fried everything. Whether it's fried pickles or even fried Oreos, America has it all. Fried uh. fish recipes first appeared in Spanish and Portuguese cookbooks as far back as the 1200s, and the Greeks were frying food in olive oil way back in the 5th century BC. Right, I suppose in England we have like, in the chip shop, we have like deep fried, well I say deep fried, it's like battered fish. Um, and obviously, if you go to Scotland, they do like Mars bars and stuff. But other, and obviously, we do like battered sausage. But other than that, like now nah, we don't deep fry that much, really. Like, obviously, chips and stuff you do, but uh, not literally as like Oreos. Why the hell would you deep fry Oreos, man? That's weird. That is pretty weird. They eat, but as America does with many things, they've adopted a tradition from far off lands and took it up a notch or five. Seventeen, get everything you need right at the pharmacy. If you're not from the U.S., it may be puzzling to walk into a pharmacy and see aisles and aisles of over-the-counter meds, toys, makeup, clothes, and even groceries. Unlike in other countries where pharmacies sell medicine and medical supplies exclusively, the ones in the U.S. are like small convenience stores where you can grab magazines, Tylenol, and a frozen pizza in one fell swoop. <laughs> 16. Fill her up. In America, if a restaurant doesn't offer free refills on fountain drinks, 
It's kind of strange. But in other countries, once you buy one beverage, that's it. France banned reef. Yeah, literally, right? The only like restaurant that I know that I go to that does like refills, and it's, they wouldn't even call them free refills because you pay out your ass just for like uh, a glass. But it's Nando's. I don't know if you've got Nando's over there, but I, I, I love Nando's. It's, it's basically like a uh, piri piri chicken. Um, but yeah, that's like the only place that you get free refills. I'm a local one. The apps, I don't want to swear, but they're just useless. They've took out Coca-Cola as well. So you've, can, you've only got Coke Zero, which is just rancid, or Diet Coke. Like, they took out full-fat Coca-Cola. So I have to go to the next town if I want to, if I want to go there and get bloody full-fat on the on refill. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. But that would be pretty handy. To be fair, if they offered free refills, you'd probably be drink, we'd probably drink less alcohol. Because we're obviously Brits are known for just like smacking the alcohol back. If they did offer that, we'd probably actually drink less because it's like, ah, oh, might as well. It's, you know, you get, you class it as free refills because obviously what you pay for like one, it's like £3.50 for like the refill drink is an equivalent to like one pint of lager, give or take. I mean, obviously some premium lagers are dearer, about a fiver, about £5. But uh, yeah, to be fair, you'd probably get less people drinking if you did refills bills on sugary sodas back in 2017 in order to combat the current obesity epidemic. But in the U.S., the idea of free refills is still alive and well. 15. If you don't like it, return it. Whether it's an ugly sweater from grandma or a heinous pair of earrings from an ex, if you don't like it, you can just return it. In America, making returns at stores is pretty normal and super easy. I mean, the U.S. even has a National Returns Day in January, conveniently held for you to return holiday gifts you weren't too thrilled about. <laughs> 14. Tips for everyone. Cab drivers, servers, hairdressers, you gotta tip them. Tips are acceptable for almost any service in the U.S. and sometimes consist of 25% of the Jesus. bill. We haven't started tipping surgeons yet, <laughs> but there are places in other parts of the world, such as Japan, that consider tipping incredibly rude, like in restaurants. When you travel to different countries, it's important to learn their... I mean, I suppose, like, we definitely tip restaurants. Always tip restaurants when we go to restaurants. Taxi drivers, yes, I, I do tend to, but not much. Like, if it's like eight pound, I'd say, yeah, take ten. Do you know what I mean? Just round it up to a tenner, or you don't usually round it up to the nearest pound or the next pound fifty. But you don't tend to tip that. But delivery drivers to the door, like you say, if you're paying cash, like if if the, if the bill's like twenty eight quid, you just give them thirty quid or whatever, and then they keep the change. But we don't tend to tip them, really. It's uh, it's mad. We don't tend to do it tipping etiquette so that you don't offend anyone. 13. I'll take my coffee to go. With a Starbucks on every corner, it's very normal to see people toting around a coffee as they shop, commute to work, and whatever else at all times of the day. But in many parts of the world, coffee is meant to be sipped on while seated and enjoying the paper or chatting with friends. T well, to be fair, I mean, I don't know how old this video is, but like now, everyone's walking around with either a Costa coffee cup or a Starbucks cup nowadays. Like, especially like in built up towns and cities, in England anyway. I mean, obviously these are in the croissants, I'd say probably France. But um, yeah, I suppose that like in France and, you know, Mediterranean countries, they probably still just sit there and sip on, you know, the espressos or whatever they have. But here in England, it's pretty much Americanized now with the coffee drinking. It used to be tea, man. Tea was like the main English drink. Now it's just coffee everywhere. And it's just like, come on, can we just keep something English, man? A bit of English tea. Love it. Tugging your coffee along with you throughout the day might be due to the fact that the cups are huge and take longer to drink. Who's got that kind of time to be sitting in a cafe for hours? <laughs> Sounds like fun to me. Number 12, the land of ice cold drinks. Now, speaking of drinks, if it's not a hot coffee or cocoa, then it's probably got ice in it. Tea, coffee, lemonade, soda, water. Americans like it on the rocks. If you go elsewhere in the world, odds are you'll be sipping your soda at room temperature or maybe slightly refrigerated if you don't. 
I don't think that one's right, man. If I'm going to be honest with you, like I've travelled around Europe. I've been to pretty much most countries in Europe. Everywhere you go, if you have like, a, I'm, I'm just going to use Coke for example because I drink a lot of Coca Cola. If you get a can of Coke or a bottle of Coke or wherever you go, like a restaurant, bar, or cafe or whatever, it usually comes with a glass of ice. To be fair, it does. So that one's that one's pretty normal. If I'm going to be honest, that one, we do that over here. I specifically ask for ice. Number eleven, keeping the AC on at all times. Americans must have an aversion to being hot. In many parts of Europe, people simply don't use air conditioning as much as they do in the States. Here, it's expected to always have the AC blaring, and a lot of visitors find it pretty strange and quite chilly. But come on, it makes sense. If you're cold, you can layer up. If you're hot, all you can do is suffer and complain about it. Number 10. Looking at dollars is a snooze fest. I remember going to Europe for the first time and thinking their banknotes look like Monopoly money. And I guess a lot of countries have bills of different colors and sizes depending on the value, like Swedish krona and Russian rubles. But not in the US. It's all greenbacks, baby. Sure, tens look a little yellowy, fifties are kind of pinkish, and Benjamins seem bluer than the others. But still, US dollars definitely aren't as fun and rainbowy as other currencies. Number 9. Giving a thumbs up. In America, even little kids know a thumbs up means good job, way to go, or anything positive like that. But if you travel to Greece or the Middle East and give this common American gesture, you probably won't make too many friends. Hey, how about giving this video a thumbs up for the useful tip? <laughs> I don't know about the Middle East, but I know I know Greece. Well, I say Greece. I used to live in I used to live in Cyprus, which is a Greek island, and it's it's known there. To be fair, I mean, like I said, I don't know how long this video is, how old this video is. I've lived in Cyprus around seventeen years ago or so, and yeah, we used to stick your thumbs up at people. That's it was pretty regarded and known, if I'm going to be honest. Um, but yes, yeah, so that one's a bit different. That one's a bit different. <laughs> Number 8. The Date Writing Conundrum So many visitors to the U.S. get really confused by the month-day-year thing, because most parts of the world write the day, then the month, then finally the year. There's no clear historical reason why the U.S. insists on writing the day differently, but we just do. Number 7. Pre-baby baby showers Many cultures celebrate a new baby coming into the world but America is one of the few places that does this before the baby actually gets here. Yeah, so this is taken off now in England. We, we have baby showers over here now as well, to be fair. It's quite popular. Not as popular probably as America. I mean, it's just usually like a little a party at someone's house, you know, um, with like some finger food or whatever. Um, but yeah, we do that over here in England as well. I, I suppose a lot of the, a lot of, English stuff is quite similar to American stuff as well as it being completely completely different. But um, yeah, we have definitely have that here in England. In East Asian countries, for instance, celebrations for a new baby are held once the baby is born, as doing otherwise is seen as bad luck. <laughs> Number six, where how are you means hello. Sure, people ask each other how they're doing in other countries, but Americans often use this phrase as a replacement for hey or hello. It doesn't even require a real response. People just answer with fine thanks, even if they're in a horrible mood or had a terrible day. So, that again, that's very similar to over here. Like, if someone walk past you and say hello, you'd be like, how you doing? Like, we, we have that as well. Instead of saying hello or hi, you can replace it with how are you doing? Or, yeah, well, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? Just, yeah, just get to the point. But uh, there, that, so that's not that's not too too different, to be honest. Number five, bathroom stalls that aren't so private. <laughs> hmm, don't like doing your business in front of complete strangers. Americans don't either, of course. But the fact that bathroom stall doors often reveal as much as your entire lower leg seems to say otherwise. There's no clear reason as to why there's this big gap in public bathroom stalls here. But many guess it's for safety reasons or ventilation. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Number four, no one uses their inside voice. 
A lot of my friends who are visiting or moved to the U.S. tell me that locals speak so loud compared to other countries. Whether it's talking on your cell phone or chatting with a friend over lunch, Americans seem to really like projecting their voice. I don't know. Maybe we just want to make sure we're heard. Number three. Right. To be fair, about about three or four years ago, I went to the Dominican Republic on holiday. Obviously, that's quite close, but well, not massively close to America, but it's obviously a, a close holiday destination for you. So when I was there, there's a lot of Americans there and quite a lot of Canadians there. And I've got to say, you guys are pretty loud. Like, I mean, I know obviously I'm quite loud doing this, but if you see me out and about in the streets, actually, no, do you know what? No, I am quite loud myself, so I really can't criticise. But, I mean, a lot of people in England are quite quiet. Um, the way they talk, they don't really have an inside, like, like you say, they have an inside voice and an outside voice. I've always got an outside voice, so I'm just quite loud and bolshy and, and whatever, so, um, but, yeah, so that's that's a one way, I'd say I'm quite similar to it, but I can see where they're coming from with that is, people in Eng some people in England, and definitely people in Europe are quiet, you know what I mean, they, they, you don't hear them talking on the phone loud or whatever to be fair or when they're talking to the mates in the street it's quite quiet it's all about choices walk into any grocery store aisle and you'll notice at least 10 different options for cookies crackers or cereal people in the UK don't have these many options for food and you'll almost never find anything in grape flavor there number two hopping into the back seat of a cab when getting into a cab, it's customary in the States to scoot on into the back seat. But in countries like New Zealand and Australia, riding anywhere but shotgun can be a little rude. Number one, that classic American smile. In the U.S., people aren't afraid to be nice and show their pearly whites all the time. And according to a 2015 study at Brown University, because America has always been a very diverse country, it forced people to smile at each other more since they couldn't always communicate with language. That's just one more historical theory as to why Americans tend to smile more than people in other places do. Or maybe we're just, you know, friendlier. Whether you're from the... Or, because it probably is, one of the best countries, if not the best country in the world. So if you live there, you probably are going to be pretty happy. I mean, unless you're, you know, unfortunate and, you know, you're not living in the best living situations. For the rest of it, I'd, I'd imagine, compared to the rest of the world, it's pretty damn good, to be fair. I mean, I know you guys have, like, um, like your disposable income compared to over here in the UK is vastly different. Like, our disposable income isn't that much. Like, what we get paid in a job, unless, like, unless you're on well above average... You're not really left with that much, really. After your bills and you know your food bill, like you know your, your house utilities, your food bills and that. If you want to go out for a couple of drinks or whatever, and or you want to go out for a meal, you, you, you're done after that. Like to be fair, I mean, unless you've got your own business and you're killing it, or unless you've got like a decent position somewhere else, pretty much once you've you know once you've you know participated in like a hobby or something can been out for a couple of drinks with your mates and paid all your bills you're pretty much fucking skint to be honest it's mad the u.s or not can you add any more strange americanisms to the list let me know down in the comments if you learned something new today then give this video a like share it with a friend and here are some more cool videos to check out from the bright side of yeah that was that was very informative to be fair like i said i'm going to try and get some more of these videos done now because i'm going to start releasing two videos a day um Obviously, one, maybe two, obviously, being like the stand-up, but I will, I'm will. going to be sliding some stuff in about America because, like you say, I do absolutely love the place and I am looking at getting over there next year at some point. So, um, hopefully, you know, with, with all this going well on the channel growing, it might be able to fund me getting over there because uh, it's very, very expensive. But, guys, if you enjoyed that, drop me a like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Peace!